regulations are, are starting to change all the time and certainly the, the types of sanctions that are being put in place are changing almost monthly at the moment. Welcome to this masterclass series entitled Realizing the True Value of Data in Association with Click, looking at how different segments of the banking industry can better use the data at their fingertips to add value to the business. I'm Joy McKnight, Deputy and Technology Editor at The Banker, and I'm joined by Duncan Ash, Senior Director, Global Financial Services at Click. In Chapter 3, we'll look at how transaction banks can use data to best protect themselves and their customers from fraudulent behavior. Thanks for joining us today, Duncan. So can you tell me a little bit about the biggest challenges that transaction banks face today in terms of fraud? Sure. Um, but, well, in, in terms of fraud, uh, the, the types of behavior are changing all the time. So the types of activities that the fraudsters are, are undertaking change constantly. So as soon as you think you've got control over what they're doing, they will, they will look for a new and innovative way to, to attack you somewhere else. So you have to monitor what you're doing to, to defend against the current type of fraudulent activity, but always be mindful of, of where else they can attack you. So you can't just build one line of defense. You have to look at the business holistically and look for every, every possible way of protecting yourself and uh, have an infrastructure in place that's agile so that when, when the fraudsters change what they do, change the ways they're going to attack you, and you can uh, you'll be able to, to react to that as quickly as possible. So how can banks really monitor and analyze transaction data better, especially around payments? Sure. So um, banks will be looking at their conventional payment systems, but they also have lots of additional source of in, sources of information, um, like sanctions watch lists, um, and they will be, be looking for very specific types of, of fraudulent behavior. Um, what we try to help them do is associate the information from their external data sources with what's going on in their transaction systems so that they can react really, really quickly when something is, is outside of the normal pattern. Okay. And you talked about sanctions um, and like ar around the world there's, sort of, there's growing regulations around know yeah. your customer, KYC, anti-money laundering, right. sanctions, screening. Yeah. Um, you know, how can banks you know, really react to that and really stay up to date? Sure. It's quite difficult actually because the, the original regulations around AML came out I think in about 2003. So banks put a lot of um, work into implementing those systems over the last 10-15 years or so. Um, but a lot of people implemented fairly early stage technology to do that and they, those systems weren't that flexible. So we've actually seen a number of organisations have to rebuild those systems to, to take into account all the new sources of information that they have to work with and to make them agile because the, the regulations are, are starting to change all the time and certainly the, the types of sanctions that are being put in place are changing almost monthly at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to be able to, to work with that and, and when something new comes along, be able to react to it very quickly. Um, I guess the other thing I'd say about that is that they, they've invested so much time and effort into these systems. Um, one of the things we try and do as well is try and, try and make use of that information. So if we're, we're storing really detailed information around um, compliance, how can we use some of that information to uh, to service the customers better as well. So how do you think banks can best protect themselves but also their clients against fraudulent behaviour? Sure, so banks need to get organised really and they need to, to put in place multiple layers of defence against fraudulent behaviour and they need to have very good relationships with their customers um, in order to make sure that they understand as much as they possibly can about their customers to make sure that they don't accidentally block uh, the wrong types of transactions. Um, I mean, we, we work with a lot of the, the major banks, particularly a, a tier one bank I can think of here in London, um, who have implemented um, complex fraud detection systems. They have a very large team of people and they, they have a very good operating model, for how they work with technology and how they, they work with the different fraud agencies to, to make sure they keep things up to date. Um, their challenge was really around how they bring together data from so many different places, so many different parts of their organisation use that data to enrich uh, the basic transaction systems and the, the, um, the sanctions list provided by some of the external agencies. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your insights, Duncan. Pleasure. In the final chapter, we look at how data can improve sales performance and revenue for wealth managers.